Hello all and welcome back. In this video, which is the third and the final part of the series, understanding the user from object, we will learn how to read data from a worksheet, edit it and save it back. We will also learn how to delete certain records, unwanted entries basically. So in short, we will learn how to manipulate the data using the user form and we will manipulate the data by reading it, editing it, saving it back or deleting it. So let's begin. We will use the same data that we used in the last video. I also have a temp sheet which is hidden currently. I used that in the last video. So if you right click on the sheet and if you click on unhide, you can see the temp sheet here. So I'm not going to unhide it, but I'm going to use it in this video for scenario two. Let's launch the Visual Basic Editor. If you're not sure what Visual Basic Editor is, then I recommend watching the video Visual Basic Editor and Introduction. We will press the shortcut key Alt F11 to launch the Visual Basic Editor. Here, I have two forms ready. I will use each one of them one by one. So let's handle scenario one, where we read the data from the worksheet. We will then display it on the user form. We will edit it in the user form itself, and then we will save the data back to the worksheet. I've already made some basic customizations in the user form. Like I mentioned, if you have not seen the first and the second video of the series, understanding user form objects, then I recommend watching those videos first because in those video, I've explained about how to do the basic customization in the user form. I've also explained how to read and display data in the user form in those videos. Here I have a user form. I'll right click on it and I'll click on view object. Here we have five labels, one for serial number, one for employee name, one for address, one for date of birth and one for gender. Next to these, we have five text boxes where we will display the data from the worksheet. We have four command buttons. The first two will behave like previous and next. I've covered about these buttons in the previous video, so I will not cover them here. Next to these two buttons, we have the save and delete button. The names are button save and button delete. Once the user edits the data in the text box, we will use these buttons. So we'll use this button to save the data. And if you want to delete the record, then we will use this button. So let's check out their codes. To view the code, you can either right click on the user form and then you can click on view code or you can simply double click on any one of the elements on the user form. When you double click on any of the element in the user form, it will directly take you to the default event of that element. This will happen if there is no code in the user form code module for that element. In case there is code for that element, then it will take you to that particular event. I'm going to double click on the user form. See, it took me to user form initialize event. Like I mentioned, when the form loads, I want to see the data of the first record. So we have used the user form initialize to write our code. I've already explained about the user form initialize event. I've spoken about button next click and the button previous click in my previous videos. So I will not explain them here. Let's directly move to button save. Now let's understand what exactly is happening here. I have declared RWS long. This is my row variable. This will store the row number of the record which we are trying to save. In this section, I'm writing to the row whatever the values are in the text boxes. And finally, I'm showing that the data has been updated. Now let's understand what button delete is doing here. I have a variable which is dim rw as long. This will hold the row number from where we want to delete our record. Below that, we have ret as long. Ret will hold the input from the message box. I'll come to that in a moment. Here, what we are doing is we are saying val serial number dot text, which means whatever the value is in the serial number text box, convert that to a value and then add one to it. Let's understand why we are doing this. If you go back to the worksheet, you will notice that the serial number is starting from row two. So if my value in, let's say serial number is four, 
then the row will be 4 plus 1 which is row number 5. So let's go back. Since we are about to delete a record, it is best to inform the user that we are deleting a record. What if the user pressed the delete button by mistake? So this message box will make them think again about this particular action. So what I'm saying is, are you sure you want to delete? Once deleted, you cannot get the data back. VB yes, no. That means the form will have two buttons, yes or no. If the user presses no, then the code will end. Nothing will happen. If the user presses yes, then I'm deleting the row. Then I'm trying to find the last row in column A. And once I have found the last row in column A, what I'm doing is I'm saying dot range A2 to A last row dot formula is equal to row minus one. This will then renumber the column. And if you do not want to show a formula in that column, then what you can do is you can simply copy this, paste it again, and then just type dot value is equal to dot value. So here, what we are saying is dot range a to a l row dot value is equal to dot range a to a ampersand l row dot value. This means whatever is in that cell, replace it with its value. So if that cell has a formula, it will be converted to value. And here we are messaging that the data has been deleted successfully. And finally, we are unloading the user form. So let's launch the user form and we will test it. To launch the user form, click on the run sub user form button or alternatively, you can press the shortcut key F5. And we can see the form loads and the first record is displayed. And as expected, the previous button is disabled. Now let's press the next button. When you press the next button, the previous button gets enabled. You can navigate to the relevant record. So let's go ahead. In fact, let's stay in Karen for the time being. And let's say I want to edit this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the year of birth from 1999 to 2000. I'm going to move this form slightly towards the right so that you can see the date of birth of Karen Hodges. Right, I've changed the year of birth. Now I will click on the save button. The moment I click on the save button, see what happens. Data updated successfully. And if you now look at this cell, it is changed to 652000. Same as this. Now if you press the next button and if you go back, it's still 2000. Similarly, you can edit any of the other fields. So not necessarily in Karen, you can just navigate through the records and edit whatever you want. So this was scenario one. Here we were able to display the employee details on the user form, edit it and then save it back on the worksheet. This is a very basic scenario. There are 10 records, so it was easy to navigate using next and previous buttons. But what if your company has 500 employees? Imagine if we can search for the relevant employee and then edit and save the details. Wouldn't that be much better than pressing the previous and next buttons to locate the employee record? For this, we will use scenario two. But before we go to scenario two, let's test the delete button as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the last or rather the second last record, which is Ronald. So I'm going to close this so that we can go to the worksheet and see where is Ronald. Ronald is in row 10 with a serial number nine. Okay. And on the ninth row, we have Joyce with serial number eight. Now let's go back. Let's run this and let's go to the second last record. So this is the record that we want to delete. Now click on the delete button. We will get a prompt. Are you sure you want to delete? Once deleted, you cannot get the data back. So I'll click on yes. See what happens to Ronald in row 10. Data deleted successfully. So Ronald's row was deleted and Jamie's row was moved up. And then the entire row was auto numbered. See, let's get back. Now let's move to scenario two. This is my second user form. Right click on it and say view object. What we will do now is we will show the data in the multi-column list box. 
where you can filter the employee name using this text box and finally you can use the below text boxes to edit and then you can click on this button to either save or you can click this button to delete that particular record. Here I have a label which informs the user to enter few characters from the employee name. Below is the text box. I have named it as TB employee name. Here the user will type few characters from the employee name. Next to it is the button which will fetch the matching records. Below is the multi column list box where we will show the matching records and when you select a record in the list box then the text boxes below will populate. Now let's check the code. So I'm going to double click on TB fetch button. I've already explained about the TB fetch button in my previous video where I spoke about how it uses dot find and dot find next. So we will skip this. The next procedure is list box one underscore click. This procedure is fired when the user clicks an item in the list box. Now let's understand what the code in this procedure is doing. In the first line, we are checking if the user has clicked on an item or not. If the user clicks on an item, then the list index will never be minus one. And in this section, we are saying list box dot list R comma C. R is the row number of the item selected in the list box. And C is the column number of the item selected in the list box. The columns in the list box are zero based. So the first column is zero. The second is one, the third is two and so on. So we are storing the serial number from column zero into the serial number text box. Similarly, we are storing the value from the second column in the list box in the employee name and so on. Below the list box click procedure, we have the button save. This is similar to what we did in the first form employee data scenario one. So I'm not going to explain that it's exactly the same thing. And below that we have button delete. So this also I have covered in the previous form, which is FRM employee data scenario one. So I will not cover this as well. Now let's launch the user form. Let's say I do not remember the name of the employee. It's at the tip of my tongue. So probably if I see a couple of names, I'll remember. Oh, yes, this is the employee. The only thing that I remember is that the employee has D and period in its name. So what I will do is I will type D and then I'll type period and then I'll click on fetch and all the records which have D and period in its name will be displayed in the multi column list box. And just by looking at this, I remember, oh, yes, it was Billy D Smith. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on that. The moment I do that, the text boxes below, they get populated. That's because if you remember, we use the list box dot list R comma C, the row comma column to fetch the data from the list box into these text boxes. Let's say the address of Billy is incorrect. It should have been 47 Castle Door Road. So I'm going to change that to 47. And I'll click on save. So before I click on save, just keep an eye towards this particular row, row number seven, Billy D. Smith's record. This 46 will automatically change to 47. Now let's click on the save button. And it says data updated successfully. The moment I click on OK, you will notice that the address has been updated. Just like we saved the record, we can also delete the record. Let's say we want to delete Billy's record. So click on the delete button. I'll get the message box. Are you sure you want to delete? I'll say yes, I want to delete. The moment I click on yes, Billy's record is deleted and the serial numbers are reset. So if I go back to the worksheet, you will see that the serial number has been reset and Billy's record has been deleted. Time for a quick recap. In this video, we learned how to read data from a worksheet, edit it and save it back. We also learned how to delete unwanted entries from our data set. So basically, we learned how to manipulate our data using reading, editing, saving or deleting. There are other parts of manipulation, for example, data analysis, showing it in dashboards, reports, etc. But we will not cover that in this video. 
So if you still have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below or you can also email me on support at tamexcel.com. I also have a Facebook page. The link is mentioned in the description below. If you have any question, feel free to post it in that group. And if I'm online, I will definitely reply to it. Or if there is any other expert, I'm sure they will be more than happy to assist you. Just a quick reminder, I'll be posting two videos every week, one on Monday and the other on Thursday. So if you'd like to extend support towards this channel, go ahead, watch a couple of videos, drop a couple of likes. And if you are really serious about learning Visual Basic Programming from scratch, then see the playlist because that is where I have arranged the videos in a specific order. So yes, go ahead and watch those videos. And if you have still not subscribed to this channel, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel by clicking on the bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video when I talk to you about 11 date functions in VBA.